How's it going everybody? It is I'm Vigil. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day and welcome back to another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi Battle versus Hossway over here in the OU tier. So if you do enjoy these, make sure to hit that like button on the video and the team I'm using is in the description if you do want to try it out. Made by me! And uh, if you don't want to Wi-Fi battle me, my Discord is in the description. You can battle other people there as well. You can message me for a battle, any tier you want, doubles, you know the drill. And, uh, yeah, I used this team in a showdown live before. It's really, really fun to use. I remember I made it really quickly. I wanted to use Bandit Inferni, and Bandit Staraptor. And then I had some two Pivot Mons, Rotom Wash, and Magearna. And then I had a Knowing Pokemon Togekiss just for a little flavor for annoying people <laughs> with Air Slash and Thunder Wave. So uh, he fakes me out, Inferni can take that. Naturally, I'll speed Metacham. I just go right for the Bandit Flare Blitz because he has no good switch into it, and he sacks Staraptor, so nice. At least it's not a defense Staraptor. It's pretty cool that he has Staraptor just like me, but in comes one up the Breloom. I do not want to catch a Mock Punch, so I go into Togekiss, four times resist fighting. And um, if he does want to go for Bolt Seed, then I can take that as well, but I highly doubt that. So he turns out to be Life Orb. But that's really good that he's not Focus Sash so that he can't Spore me and stay in. And uh, yeah, I can just go for it there slash pretty safely. It doesn't really matter if he goes to Magirna since I'm probably just going to switch out versus Magirna either way. Togekiss can't do much to Magirna unless I want to Thunder Wave it. And I do want to Thunder Wave it because it looks to be in a Soul Vest Magirna. Judging from the air slash damage, even though it is resisted and I max HP Togekiss really bulky, I can kind of tell it's a Soul Vest since it's just, it would have took in a little bit more if it wasn't. So that's why I knew I could at least take one hit from Magearna. Even if it's offensive, I could probably take a hit. So he goes for Flash Cannon as I go into Rotom Wash. Rotom Wash was kind of like, okay, if he goes for a Steel move, I could take that. If he goes for Volt Switch, I could take that. And I could maybe pivot out. Um, hopefully he doesn't go to Mega Metacham and just high jump kick me, which would suck. Maybe Rotom can live that though from max HP after a Volt Switch. Either way, I got some Hydro Pimps off on the Magearna, just ch chipping it away as much as possible because um, my special attackers can't really break through it. Staraptor doesn't appreciate it. The only thing that can really do um, work is Infernape against it, honestly. But he actually brought in the Greninja as a missile Hydro Pump right there. Uh, wasn't really scared of Greninja because I could literally take a hit and just Vol Switch on it. But then he brought in Breloom, so maybe he should have just, just brought in Breloom on the Rotom instead of the Greninja. Because if he brought it in on a Hydro Pump, then he could have gotten a nice Bullet Seed off on something, or maybe a Rock Tome. But he lost a little bit of momentum right there as I Volt Switched on his Breloom, brought in Togekiss, and I go for it. And Nasty Plot predicting him to want to switch out. I doubt he wants to stay in. And if he does, I probably take it either way, unless he Rock Tomes me and lowers my speed, which would suck. So, you know what Togekiss does, and it does it best, really. We're gonna, well, not better than Drachi, but at least Drachi, you know, it's weak to ground, so Togekiss is not. And Togekiss, at least, uh, you know, it's immune to Dragon, too, which is nice. Having more Fairy types is pretty good. And plus, you never really see Togekiss in OU, so I just wanted to use it as well. So, I mean, even though Drachi is objectively better, because it could take on the Psychic types a lot better in the OU tier, like Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele is a monster in the OU. That's like a Pokemon I can see being banned, to be honest. Because it's just a Pokemon that can probably beat any Pokemon. Honestly. Anyways, though, we flinched the heck out of that Magirna. <laughs> he got a nice Flash Cannon off, but unfortunately, he just did not break through. I mean, that's what Togekiss does. It has no mercy against Pokemon that take 10 Air Slashes, because it'll flinch every single time. With that beautiful ability called Serene G Grace. So yeah, he brought in Greninja, I just go into Magearna because it's a Soul Vest and it's a nice pivot to a Greninja unless he's ground even Z. I go for the Vol Switch as he goes into Mew, and that allows me to just bring in my Bandit Star Raptor. And Star Raptor Bandit does not care if you're defensive because it's gonna get Munium Z, man. I was hoping this would be a bulky Mew. I mean, it didn't have leftovers, so I kind of figured. I was kind of hoping he would be modest too so I could blow it back, but he's timid and it's a speed tie. And he's gonna blow me back with the Munium Z. Unfortunately, Staraptor, I really wanted to use, like, like let Staraptor shine with this team. I think it shined more in the Showdown Live that I uploaded a little while back. Not in the Wi-Fi Battles I'm gonna show you today, <laughs> I think. Uh, Infernape definitely shines, though, with its shininess and its banded. So he gets the Psychic Terrain up after Munium Z is popped on my Staraptor. Infernape naturally outspeeds Mew, so I just go for the U-turn because I kind of expected him to probably want to switch out too. And I, plus, I don't want to Flare Blitz because I take too much recoil. And uh, yeah, I'd rather just U-turn and go about it like that. It would suck though if he didn't ask about Rock Polish there though. But I know that maybe Togekiss can take one or maybe I can Thunder Wave it. But he brought him Braylon as I guess a sack. It takes the U-turn and I can just air slash it to knock it out. Plus, I was thinking he might just go into Greninja too on my Infernape, but he didn't. 
In comes Therapy, the Mega Metacham goes for the Fake Out. You can, you know, hit priority moves on flying types if you guys didn't know. Um, now you know. At least I know a lot of people, like, miss that for some reason. And Togekiss is just naturally has been Mega Metacham. Knocks me out the Ice Punch. It's fine because I don't need Togekiss anymore. All I really need is the Infernape and the Mega Scizor. I'm just going to go into it because might as well. It doesn't really do much versus Greninja. And Mew probably has Flamethrower or Fire Blast. So I'm just like, all right, yeah. You know, the best shot Mega Scizor is going to do something versus one of his Pokemon is versus Mega Medcham. Even though we get two-shotted by High Jump Kick, it's okay. We can Swords Dance and hit him with a nice Bullet Punch to put him in range for really anything on my team. And maybe I could one-shot him, but nope. Mega Medcham can take that. I kind of figured since I'm not Max Attack, Mega Scizor too. Which is to be expected. I remember when I built this team, I wanted like a bunch of U-turn and Vol Switch too, uh, so that we can keep up the momentum with this team and just start hitting them hard with Staraptor and Infernape. So uh, yeah, I just go for a U-turn as it knocks out the Mega Metacham, but he brought in Greninja, so I guess he thought that I'd go for like a fire move, but either way, Greninja gets one-shotted by that U-turn. Beautiful damage by Bandit Infernape. Bring in the Rotom Wash as in comes the Mew. I wanted to bring in Rotom because Rotom can take at least a hit probably from Mega Metacham and Mew, and I can get some nice chip off with the Hydra Pump. Even though it is risky to miss it, um, maybe I can put Mew in range for a Mock Punch, and that's the plan at least. And then Infernape naturally outspeeding Mega Metacham, I can just sack my last other Pokemon to it, and then, you know, my other Pokemon to Mew if this so happens, but I'm just gonna Mock Punch the Mew, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Pretty much I have more sacks. Um, than him, and yeah, he has to fake out the Infernape to knock it out, but I'm not going to allow him to do that. Unless he has Bullet Punch and somehow knocks me out, but I highly doubt Bullet Punch is going to knock out my Infernape. Plus, I still have Magirna over here, but Magirna is just probably going to get one-shotted by High Jump Kick since Mega Metacham does not play around <laughs> with its pure power. So, goodbye, Magirna. It's okay, though. Infernape comes in, and I think I just Mock Punch just to assert dominance as well. Just in case they had Bullet Punch <laughs> and somehow knocks out a Fernie. But I highly doubt that they had like Ice Punch, High Jump Kick, Fake Out. Most of them just have like Zen Headbutt as the last move. So that's a GG to Hosue over there. And um, yeah, really, really fun, kind of Gen 4 ish themed team. We got Rotom, Togekiss, and Fernie, and Strapter. A lot of Gen 4 mods. Then we just got Magirna, Gen 7, and Scizor, which is uh, Gen 2. So uh, next up we got is versus Richeroni over here, and it uh, looks like we got another Mew and Greninja, so that's pretty cool. And um, yeah, Mega Deante is like all around just a very hyper offensive team looking at it. Um, so yeah, U-Turners are going to be pretty crucial uh, with Infernape, and Mock Punch is going to be pretty nice. And pretty much not real two switches to Infernape, like Close Combat, Flare Bullets, U-Turn, like it just hits hard. And Staraptor as well. And um, my pivots can also take on their hard hitters as well, hopefully. Even though there's a lot of hard hitters on Rich Ronin's team. So my uh, Rotom is the lead of choice. It leads up well versus like literally everything on their team, and I can just fire if I had a Hydro Pump versus the Victini. I guess he thought that I'd go for a Volt Switch because he goes into Gliscor. <laughs> that is not going to happen today. You are going to get one-shotted. So he really misplayed right there, bringing in Gliscor on my Rotom because he could have maybe kept that for uh, maybe Magirna to Earthquake it, even though Magirna's usually have Ice Beam, mine doesn't though, and uh, he could maybe take a hit from an abandoned Infernape or a Strapter too and do some nice chip. Either way, in comes Hoop Unbound. I go to Tokus because I can take a Hyperspace Fury if he wants to throw that off, but he goes for a Hyperspace Hole, which I did not expect. I think that's the special version of Hoopa, and that's the Psychic move as well, so Tokus does not take that. But he actually switched out, so I guess he was scared of me Thunderwaving him. Like, maybe he's modest or something, and um, he just didn't want to get Thunderwave, which is smart. But Victini got Thunderwave, which sucks because it's probably Scarf, I'm thinking, at least. Um, I mean, most Victinis I run into are banded, but I mean, he's looking at his team. That looks like it would be the Scarfer. And unfortunately, Togekiss does what it does best, and it's just gonna start flinching down this Victini. <laughs> I mean, really, Togekiss, you know, I mean, I don't really need it that much for this game. Deancey kind of just hard walls it. He doesn't want to get Thunderwave though with Deancey, that's for sure. He has to make a wall first. But, uh, yeah, he doesn't break through, unfortunately. And uh, luckily, I don't miss as well versus the Victini. That could have been bad if it was like a Solvest set. I remember I ran into a Solvest Victini one time, and, you know, the Z Celebrate set runs around every now and then, but Thunderweave does not care. So then comes Dancy. Obviously, it wants to probably go for a rock move like Diamond Storm, so I just go to Magirna. I doubt he's going to go for an Earth Power, but Tokus can't do anything to Dancy, like, at all. So I just switch out. 
He does get his rocks up though, which is smart. P probably predicting me to switch out, or you know, knowing that I can't do anything. So yeah. And Magirna can just literally volt switch and bring in one of my hard hitters, which he brought a noob on bounce. So that's really nice of him, so that I can go into an Infernape and just click a U-turn and just keep up that momentum of volt turn and just an endless cycle of horrific just trying to cover those Pokemon, but nope, I'm just going to keep U-turning and Volt switching. <laughs> I mean, that's the annoyance of this team. It is pretty annoying, like, when I built it. So I bring in Scizor, and I'm just going to be like, alright, let's just go for the Bolt Punch. Hopefully he doesn't stay, I mean, he hopefully he stays in and thinks that I'm just going to U-turn, because I've been U-turning and Volt switching on every single Mon on him, so he's probably getting tired of switching around, not doing anything. But I Blood Punched, and down goes the Mega DNC. So, nice. In comes, I think, uh, yeah, Hoop Unbound, and he tries to hit a Folks Blast, but he misses. So that wouldn't have knocked me out, but it definitely would have done a lot if he's, like, Specs Modest, that's for sure. But unfortunately, that is not the case, and Scizor just one-shots it. I mean, fourth times a week to bug, what are you going to do? So, bring in my Raptor, as I'm hoping that Raptor can hopefully claim a life here, because, you know, Raptor's not been doing too much the past few games. And Mew gets one shot by Kit, so nice. I don't know if that mattered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it probably didn't if he was a offensive mute, but if he was defensive, it probably mattered. So, last mon is Greninja, the Yakuza. I think that's like a Japanese gang or something. Either way, Ice Beam Star after Star after gets outsped. I mean, I don't need Star after anymore because this is literally his last Pokemon, and I just bring in Infernape and go for the Mock Punch and just hopefully knock out the Greninja. It's probably like Choice Scarf, is what I'm assuming, but the Greninja lived. So I was like, dang, okay, then that sucks. And he turns out to be not Scarfed, so I was like, okay, maybe uh, the Greninja Z move. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter because I have priority. With Mega Scizor, I would have loved the Folks Blast. If you had him Power Fire, that would have sucked on that Hoopa. But I still have a lot more pivots to this for this Greninja. So, I mean, Rotom can take a hit. Nagirna can take a hit. It doesn't really matter, <laughs> even if I didn't have Scizor. So that's a GG versus Richeroni right there. So yeah, that, uh, you can see how deadly this team can be um, versus some scary Mons in the OU tier. Next up, we got versus O Ren. Issue, we got a Rain team. And I always get excited playing Rain because Rain is always just a very dominant just style of team that can uh, be very terrifying when you play against because, you know, it has great synergy with Ferrothorn, Mega Swampert, can demolish teams. And then you got Ludicolo and King Jaw. And on top of that, I'm like, oof, this is going to be tough. And then Greninja as well. So it's pretty much just like overall water pressure. Like, it's just gonna start hitting me hard in the rain. Like, Greninja's very scary, Kingdra's very scary, Ludicolo, and Swampert. So, yeah, at least Rotom Wash is one of the best Pokemon you can have versus a rain team because it can take any one hit from the Pokemon and it can, you know, Wisp them, it can Volt Switch, it can Paint Split, but I think mine has Defog, so, yeah. I lead off a Rotom Wash because it leads up well versus a Ren Ishii's team. It leads off Greninja and hits me with a Grass Knot, which I did not expect because, for one, it does nothing. Um, I guess they didn't realize that or ever went for a Grass Knot on a Rotom. And two, you just never really see Grass Knot on a Battle Bond Greninja, too. Um, so I guess maybe that's for Gastrodon, even though Gastrodon doesn't take too much, even though it's four times a week to Grass, funny enough. It doesn't take too much for my Grass Knot because Gastrodon's pretty, like, not heavy. That's the reason why I did nothing to Rotom. It's, it's not heavy at all, and I just go for the Vol Switch as you get run and Pelipper. <laughs> so I was like, okay, awesome. We got rid of his Rain Setter, so his Rain is limited, and yeah, sacking the Pelipper was the best thing in the world for me. So looking pretty good versus a Rain team so far. So I bring him again as he brought in Ludicolo. Um, I was hoping that he would bring in Ludicolo and stay in because. Ludico, I don't have a switch in for. Magirna is like my best option for it. Um, Magirna, I do kind of need to keep healthy though for the Greninja and the Kingdra though. But that's not going to happen today because he knocks off my Soul Vest and does massive damage with the Hydro Pump. At least I got a Flur Cannon off, weakened him a lot. But I thought Volt Switch would knock him out. I, even after minus two for my Magirna after going for Flur Cannon. I thought it would. I should have just went for another Flur Cannon. But that's fine since I do have priority and I can just bring in my Inferno and Mock Punch him. In comes Kingdra though, and I'm just like, all right, well, time to pick a Pokemon. I cannot really switch into this. I want to keep Rotom for the Swampert. Maybe I can Wisp for the Ferrothorn as well. So I might as well just sack Magirna since Magirna doesn't really do much versus his team anymore. It probably goes down to a Hydro Pump from Gren. It probably goes down to anything from Swampert. I mean, Earthquake, Waterfall, and it gets knocked out by Fer well, not Ferrothorn, but probably Gyre Ball. I mean, it can't do much to Ferrothorn except for Folk Blast. But he turns out to be Z Splash Kingdra, which is awesome. I ran into that before on the showdown like ladder and are you and i said i wanted to use it but i never got the chance to use it so awesome that's really dope plus three attack on kingdra when you use splash um 
So immediate plus three attack with rain up. That's terrifying, but he locks himself in outrage with knocking out my Rotom Wash, which sucks since I needed that for Swamper, but at least I have another fairy type. See, hey, another fairy type on the team, two fairy types. You can't go wrong. Fairy type, one of the best types in the game. So now I'm able to Thunder Wave the Kingja and do what Tokiz does best. <laughs> and Air Slash flinch, but he actually hits himself in the face with Confusion after the Outreach, so that's awesome. Because the more attack you have raised, the more damage you take from Confusion. And he just goes down to the next Air Slash, so awesome. In comes Ferrothorn, I don't want to take a Gyro Ball, plus uh, Tokiz can maybe Thunder Wave the Greninja and maybe Air Slash flinch Swamper down, so I'm going to keep it and just go into Infernape, plus Inf Infernape has no switching at all uh, for a close combat. like. Everything probably goes down to one close combat. Greninja can't switch in, Swampert can't switch in, but he actually does switch in the Swampert. So I was like, awesome, nice. He should have just sacked Ferrothorn right there, or Greninja. Probably not Greninja, probably Ferrothorn. So yeah, so Swampert's not going to be able to outspeed Infernape. He doesn't even Mega Evolve. I'm, uh, I guess, you know, you didn't want to. Maybe you just didn't have the Mega Evolve. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe it was, he just thought it was a waste of time because he literally just goes down to a close combat and we just don't need to see the animation. Either way, brought in Infer uh, the Ferrothorn for some odd reason, not bringing in Greninja. Down it goes to a close combat. Maybe they thought they would live. I mean, I was thinking, what if it's Choppleberry? I don't care, because the worst thing that could happen is Thunder Wave, and plus, I'm already outsped by Greninja. I, I might as well just mock punch it. So, uh, yeah. Greninja comes out, the last Pokemon. I just sacked Staraptor. Unfortunately, Staraptor, I love you, but <sighs> you're the sack of choice because you're the fastest way for me to win a game. Um, because you're the only Pokemon that probably goes down to a Hydro Pump at this point in the time. So, I mean, Scizor probably could go down as well, but, you know, it could probably take one as well, or miss, and then I could U-turn, and I just want Infernape to knock out the Greninja with the Mock Punch, and it should, even though the last Greninja lived my Mock Punch, but this one is chipped by that burn, and it does go down. Luckily, he was Specs, most likely, since if he wasn't, he would have Water Shuriken me and blown me back, but then Scizor would have just came in and U-turned and took in anything from the Greninja, and I already knew he wanted me Z-move Greninja, since his Z-mover is Kingtra. So yeah, that's a GT versus Orenishi. Probably could have played a little bit better, but Orenishi acknowledges that. I remember after the game, Orenishi said they uh, played it terribly. But I mean, honestly, like, you know, what could have you really done? Uh, Rotom just is one of the best things versus a rain team. Magirna is really good for his special attackers like Ludicolo and Greninja. And Infernape literally just clicks close combat when you don't have Pelipper. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, Straptor does click buttons as well, Braver too, but unfortunately I just sacked it. And Togekiss as well can take a hit and Thunder Wave. So, yeah, cool team on whole random issues part, that's for sure. And last but not least, we got Prince over here. And I uh, got Incineroar, so that's pretty cool. You know, uh, in OU. And then I have Random Halucho with no uh, Tapu. But we'll see, we'll see, that's for sure. Probably Mega Scizor. Zerg Tree is always terrifying. I'm actually, like, that's the most terrifying Pokemon to play against with this team I have because I don't have a choice card for. And if it gets a, a Z-Hypnosis off, it literally outspeeds everything on my team, and it can tail glow up and just one-shot everything. So I'm really scared of that Zerk tree. And yeah, other than that, I don't really know. Greninja is going to be maybe Battle Bomb like everybody else uses, and uh, Glide Score, maybe Rocks, I don't know. So yeah, he leads off with Incineroar. Rotom Wash is an amazing lead, so that's why I lead off with Rotom Wash. And I can just Hydro Pump or Volt Switch on everything. So yeah, Incineroar... It actually just stays in and takes the Hydro Pump. <laughs> I don't know why. You could have kept this for... Maybe Staraptor, I don't know. Uh, Infernape probably just destroys it with close combat, even though with the Intimidate. So he goes for the knockoff, gets rid of my leftovers, which sucks. But hey, we get rid of Incineroar, so I'll take it at least. So that's pretty good. In comes Greninja. He's trying to get his Battle Bomb, maybe. But I can live a hit from Greninja, so I'm like, okay, I might as well just stay in a Volt Switch. Since I know I can take a hit. And I don't really need Rotom uh, specifically healthy for anything really, except for maybe Gliscor, but I can switch in on Gliscor. I mean, the best, the worst thing you do is like Swords Dance Facade Me or Toxic Me and Roost, but I can Hydro Pump him, so it doesn't really matter. So I Volt Switched as I go, went into Scizor. He was low kick, so I was like, okay, I mean, I could just probably Bullet Punch him and knock him out, but he brought in Zerkatree, and my worst nightmare is Seer Zerkatree is ready to probably sweep my entire team. So I stay in and just go for the U-turn as he goes for the Lectrium Z, I'm like, all right, that's weird. I thought he would be Z Hypnosis because he would put me to sleep and raise the speed, but he's the Electric Terrain, so awesome. Now I don't get put to sleep. And, I mean, even if you had Hypnosis with uh, Electric Terrain, you can't put me to sleep, but nobody runs that. So you probably should have ran Z Hypnosis. Maybe you just used it before and you just missed a lot. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter because Zerka Tree just goes down to a Mach Punch, but then how Lucha comes out and activates its Electric Seed. So I'm like, ah, okay, so that's your... Uh, 
how Lucha set her, you know, since you don't have a top of uh, it kind of makes sense, but I feel like Zeebnosis is a lot better since, you know, you could have put my Scizor to sleep, Tail Glowed up, and probably sweep my entire team. Probably. Even though I do have priority with Mock Punch and stuff like that. And hope, and I, I would have hoped that Scizor would have woken up in, like, U-Turn too. So yeah, I just bring him in as the Acrobatics. No Swords Dance, which is odd. Um, I would have Swords Dance on the Infernid. Maybe he was just scared that I would have went for their Flare Blitz. I don't know. Either way, he Swords Dances on Magirna and goes down to a Flare Cannon. So, uh, yeah. Goodbye, Halucha. <laughs> Uh, pretty interesting, but we take those. In comes Glad Score. Obviously, he's probably just gonna go for an Earthquake. Staraptor can come out, take anything, and we're banded, so he's gonna not do anything to Staraptor at all. I mean, unless you're gonna be Stone Edge and crit me for some odd reason, you would be running Stone Edge and Glad Score, but that is not the case. So, yeah, we two shot the Glad Score with the Brave Bird. He can have me with like a facade, but I can take that too, so yeah, I mean, it's looking like a done deal at this point. He has barely any Pokemon left. I have all six of my Pokemon. My hard hitters just demolished his last Pokemon, so yeah, he, I mean, he's just not going to be able to pull through, I think, honestly. So knockout was glad to score with the uh, Brave Bird right there with Staraptor. Finally, Staraptor gets a knockout! I mean, it did knock out that Mew, but at least uh, it didn't crit this glad score <laughs> and knocked it out, because uh, maybe Mew lived. So, in comes Scizor, it's gonna bull punch my Staraptor, unfortunately Staraptor is gonna go down right here, but that's fine, because Infernape can claim the last two. And, uh, yeah, Infernape is just the MVP of these Wi-Fi battles because it really just cleans up these late-game teams. Like, I mean, the team's late-game. And, uh, yeah, just have no switches. Like, you think Greninja's gonna take this Flare Blitz? Nope. Goodbye, Greninja. From the range it's at, it's not gonna take it since we're banded. And, uh, his last Mon Scizor, obviously, four times weak to fire, is not gonna be able to take it. And that is gonna be GG versus Prince. So, yeah, really fun team. Try it out. If you do want to watch about me, make sure to be in my Discord. And um, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Very, very nice. I love Infernape. I'm going to try and use Straptor a little bit more because I feel like Straptor doesn't get enough love, and it's one of my favorite Pokemon to use. It just didn't really perform these Wi-Fi battles, so, yeah. I also want to try and get some more lower tier battles, even though I do have a lot stored up, but I feel like I need more PU battles because I don't get too much PU battles. Um, and ZU. I need ZU. I want to upload more ZU. I only, I barely had any ZU wife battles. Because ZU is actually a really fun tier to play with all those uh, untiered mons. So, yeah, that's the uh, wife battle say. Alright, peace, peace, everybody.